It's the Benz Brunani woman is Baby boys, baby girls, you need to hear this Baby sit down, sit down, receive this realness Make sure your cup's ready for the tea we are go sip it here Hard time scrolling for your long shorts You might learn something you never know Could let you find And she's one of a kind Don't say you mind, say you mind Such a big tune. Such a big tune. Bloody hell. Left keeps telling me to stop saying bloody hell. Anyway, happy Gregorian calendar year. Happy new Gregorian calendar year. We are in 2024. Um, I don't know what y'all are doing about that. Um, but yeah, it's me, Kalechi, the baby girl in a place to be. And you are listening slash watching SYM, officially known as Say Your Mind, unofficially known as What What, for not much longer, Suck Your Mum. <laughs> um, yes, 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 yes. I'm glad to be back. Um, people have been saying that I have a sort of glow I have a sort of glow. Don't watch what I look like today, by the way, if you're watching this on the Tuesday at 5.55. Um, don't watch what I look like because, child, yeah, I went for a run, then I went to the gym and then I came straight over here to record. And then there is this thing that I do when I, I just go down a rabbit hole. I just go down a rabbit hole and then I look up and like three hours have passed. So I'm just like, let me record this so I can actually get home and eat like my first meal of the day. Because I don't like to eat before I go for a run. I don't like to eat um, when I'm training or before I train. Um, I prefer to train on an empty stomach. And uh, but th what that's meant is that I've just been out for hours and I haven't um, done anything. So I'm still wearing like my Nike running top. I'm wearing some uh, cargo pants, some green cargo pants. I changed into those so I could feel a bit warmer. Yeah, I felt a bit chilly. So now I've got on my kefir. Thank you um, for getting it for me, my good sis Hodan. Um, so big up Palestine, free Palestine, ceasefire, all them things there. It's so beautiful. And I learned through my um, research and also as I researched it, Bisan, she posted a video about it that you know the bottom part or the part that you can see that's kind of like squiggly on the kofia is um represents wheat so it's um it's a scarf of sorts it's um by um palestinian people and then this bit or the kind of squiggly bit that looks a bit like birds maybe that's why i start thinking about birds um it's actually wheat which is um one of the main crops in palestine and then you've got this bit here that we see that looks a bit like um fishnets because that's what it is um they're meant to represent fishnets and that's the main sort of craft in palestine so i have my scarf courtesy of my good sis um as a show of solidarity with the people them so this scarf is from her bawi and um, it says here you are holding a kofia made by Herbari, the last and only kofia manufacturer in Palestine. With your purchase, you are contributing to keeping our factory running its production and preserving a Palestinian traditional and a national symbol. Um, so if you want to get yourself one, they are at www.herbawi, that's um, H-I-R-B-A-W-I dot P-S, made with love in Palestine. Um so yeah love my love my kafir and it's keeping me warm in this office of mine um these arms of mine they are lonely oh why do i know so many big tunes why do i know so many big tunes gosh i just i can't tell you i honestly can't tell you um Wait, did I actually choose a Shea or Magnificence? Well, I guess 
that's part of my share, your magnificence, I guess. But I haven't even gotten there yet, but I'm sure I have one. This is what happens, like I said, when I'm just going down this rabbit hole, I do other things. Yes, I do have one. I do have a share of magnificence, actually. Yeah, I just didn't put it in my notes. Anyway, what have I been up to? You ask. Um, I would like to say resting, but I wasn't doing much of that. Um, simply because when the last episode I put out was 24th of, you know, I recorded it on the 24th of December. So that was Christ, uh, Christmas Eve. And then Christmas Day, I was, um, you know, cooking, like doing all of those bits. My brothers came around. That was really, really lovely. Made the meat pie. Did not give Sadiq 24. I did not give him 24. That's ridiculous. But I gave him lots and lots of food to take home. Um, so that was cute. And then... I started to feel a bit under the weather, but thankfully, 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 I had um, two at my disposal. I had cordyceps um, mushroom powder as well as reishi mushroom powder. Um, those were the main ones that I took, although I have chaga as well as lion's mane um, mushroom powder. I was mainly taking cordyceps and um, reishi and also uh, neem tea. And then I bought shilajit, shilajit, um, which is like a resin. And so I was taking that as well as oil of oregano, my turmeric and ginger and um, some vitamins. Yeah, I think those were my main things. And garlic. So I say all of that because I had to stack all of this in my system to stave off like getting proper ill. I was so... What I feel like it like it seems to always happen where it gets to the moment that my body kind of or my brain hears oh that's it now it's the end of you know well as we see it the year um you know people are taking a break and my brain's like yeah we're gonna take a break too I'm gonna shut down your body so you don't get any fucking ideas um yeah it just happens like it happened 2022 Christmas time when myself and Lev, we went to go, we stayed at a beach house in Whitstable with Kevin Morosky, and I just felt really super ill and couldn't even stay for the full time because I just felt so ill, so we had to go home. And so this year, I could feel it trying to like creep up on me because I just know I just be, been working myself, like grinding myself down. I could feel it creeping up on me, so I started stacking um all of this stuff and i'm really grateful actually for the concentration um or the potency of the mushrooms that i have um let me make sure this is turned down of the mushrooms that i have from um what are they called hybrid herbs let me just find their page to make sure i tell you about them yeah they're at, they're on instagram they're at hybrid h-y-b-i-r-i-d h-y-b-r-i-d herbs h-e-r-b-s hybrid herbs um they are so they're basically their mushroom um powders are 10 times stronger than like the average so you know i used to get um the mushroom powder from dirty dirt tea and then somebody recommended holly i think it was holly recommended that i check out hybrid herbs and got some of their powders through yo yo the potency meant that I just it it wasn't landing like you know I I still knew that I needed to rest and all of that stuff but it just didn't grab me like the the ailment just didn't you know it didn't grab me basically I took Lev um to Lisbon so we spent New Year's Eve New Year's Day we spent it in Lisbon so we left on like the 29th and we got back on the 2nd of January um we had a great time. I found this beautiful apartment hotel uh, near, um, is it uh, near the Time Out Market? So we stayed there. Um, our one bedroom apartment was super lovely and they were so lovely. Um, on New Year's Eve, they came round and gave um, each you know person staying there a bottle of a prosecco and then they gave us raisins there were 12 raisins that you're meant to eat one at each stroke um as it clocked midnight um and make a wish with each raisin i was asleep no yeah no i was still awake because I, I i i write a letter to myself every new year's eve but i went to sleep soon after so 
I just, I couldn't be asked basically to do the thing, even though I was awake. Um, because I like to write my my letter to myself that I use, is it future me? And then it delivers it on New Year's Eve the next year or, the, you know, yeah. So I did that um, and I was reading my letter from the previous year and it was just interesting that it was the throwaway things that I said that came to pass in like the biggest ways. The bigger things that I mentioned was just like, no, but that doesn't mean never, you know, delay is not denial. So we we move you know we move um so that it was just a beautiful time with my baby boy um playing lots of lots of games he he has so many games in his mind that we must play so we were playing lots of games went out to get food had really yeah we just had a really nice time like sightseeing and stuff and going for walks and it was really necessary I was even worried the day before we left so that was the 28th I was so worn down I was so worn out that I thought ah I don't know if we should go you know because I don't know if I feel like I don't want to be in some next country and then be too ill to like do anything um and primarily look after him but I actually started to feel once I had like a good sleep I, I started to feel better and when we got there I still felt a bit like Ugh, on certain days but not not majorly I was I was all right it was weird I was all right but I knew that rest was paramount and um yeah now I just feel much better but I think that she legit she legit that it's that girl is that resin is that girl because it moves mucus out of your system but it did it in such a like a nice way so I wasn't really coughing I wasn't really sneezing I didn't have much of that but I could get my mucus out and um yeah I feel, I feel much, I feel good. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, I knew that I would now. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so I feel better. Um, so yeah, like what have you been up to? How are you feeling? I don't stress yourself out. Remember that this is not our new year. You know, our new year comes at the end of March once we move into airy season. For now, we'll just go with the girlies that believe that you could fuck you could have a fucking new year in winter when everything has gone to sleep or is dead. Like what do you mean? But we'll go with it. Whatever you say, we'll we'll go with it. But we know that we talk about new life when everything starts blossoming again but that's by the by so um what did I want to tell you about so when I was at the airport where was it we were in the lounge um we flew BA um and so we were in the lounge and who was sitting there Philip Schofield was sitting there with his family that guy looked so miserable (laughs) he looked so miserable gosh (laughs) that oh child he is going through it. Um, I already told you that the apartment was beautiful. Um, oh, and I spent a lot of time actually while we were in Lisbon. I was getting everybody's tarot readings done to tell, um, you know, for those who are on Patreon for what to expect from the beginning of 2024. So I had to bang those out, even though I was feeling a bit under the weather. But I was so glad because I just I could feel the energy. I could feel like the accuracy of it all. So when I started getting all of these messages firing in already, like, ah. Oh, it was so it's already so accurate and it just makes me so happy um Laurence said something similar the other day I did a reading for our our baby girl our sis Laurence um last year like in August and she posted that she's amazed that all the things that I said in the reading have unfolded and she's seeing how much they've come to pass and I'm just really really grateful to God I'll always take the opportunity to say big up yourself um an entity like my big G you know for trusting me to um be of assistance and to bear witness um in times that people need me thank you for allowing me to be a vessel of your love and kindness and mercy to slaps on your chest although you don't have a chest as you are just everything and everywhere and everyone but large up yourself in it large up, like yeah just large up yourself big g um so yeah so that was cool and then i felt the urge to tighten up my novel i finally sent it off to imagine this is this is how my brain works right i tightened up the novel and um, while we were out there whenever when Lev was sleeping I'd get my MacBook um, my MacBook out and just start like typing 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 just to because there were certain things that I saw that I thought I thought okay I could pull this in pull this in here and just make everything kind of judge everything up 
And when I felt like, oh, it's in a decent place, I sent it off to my agent and then I sent it off to my editor, Sarita. And sod's law, I get back to London, I have a good sleep. What happens? I realized that one of the characters, I could actually flesh them out a a lot more. So I go back in and start adding to this character. Yo, sexy, sexy. He's not even fully human, but he's sexy. Jesus. Like, you know, like when it catches you, like, of course, of course, the humanoid is sexy. What? But yeah so anyway that will mean nothing to you right now but in 2025 something something was stuck in my throat <laughs> in 2025 it'll make more sense yeah because i guess that's when it comes out a paz um what well, but <laughs> it was funny because sarita said when i sent it to her she was just like um yeah, I'm going to get to it. I've got some other things to read through, but I'm going to get to yours in a few weeks. So enjoy your few weeks of no writing and I'll come back to you on this. <laughs> I had that smile, like that weirdo, Chrissy Teigen. I had that smile on my face, you know, that strange smile, like, because <laughs> there is no few weeks of no writing because I've got another deadline for something else for April. And um, yeah, so it's back on, t- back onto those ropes I go. Yeah, but um, I'm very excited for the thing that I should be writing anyway. And I know that in the meantime, I'm probably going to get edits from this. After, like, I keep saying this, but uh, I guess after getting this other thing done, handing it in for, inshallah, April, that I'll get edits and things and bits and th- bobs to do f- with that. That's going to take us to what, maybe june july nobody should call my name nobody i don't I, I can let don't call my name don't call my name don't if it's to do with writing leave me alone leave me alone because i don't know how some of you do it you writers that deadline off the deadline uh-uh. can somebody rest again I'll be in my room sometimes, busting a little wine, little wine, like dancing, having a great time in front of my mirror. And then out of nowhere, like a thief in the night, the realization that I've still got a deadline would just dawn on me. And I'll be like, ugh, ugh. I don't want to feel that way. I want to be able to wind up my waist and know that I don't owe anybody any word count. I don't know. I don't owe anybody any document. That's where I want to be, just for a few months. I say that, but then, like I said, I also want to do a master's, so don't know what is up with me there. Um, One of the best parts of my um, New Year's with my baby boy was that, um, or no, this was actually before we left for um, Lisbon. I had a reading with an astrologer called Colby Barrett, so that's C-O-L-B-E, and his last name is B-A-R-R-E-T-T, I believe. He's m- m- mainly on Instagram. He's not like anywhere else. I happened to find him through Jazrina. Jazrina sent me one of his posts that I think I actually talked about um, on last week's episode or the last episode that I posted. Um, He is something else. Like he read my chart in a way that, and, and this is the thing about astrology, be- every because all of us are different we'll have different interpretations of what we see of course they're generally mostly cohesive like they all go together because you can't just make shit up right so they all sort of go together but what he did and i think jason did it the sagittarian mind he did similar where when they're doing a reading for you they don't look at your actual natal chart like your birth chart they focus on your progress chart so the progress chart is still takes your um, birth details um, in, but what it does is that it looks at where uh, the degree that the planets would have moved to, like they move incrementally, like throughout our life, right? So, yeah, so it looks at where, based on each increment assigned to each of the planets, each of the celestial bodies, it looks at where they would now be based on those increments. Like, oh, so this planet moves by one degree every so often, and then this planet does this. So the planet that we were focused on was my moon, right? And 
yeah, it was so fascinating. So, so fascinating. Um, and I did, yeah, I didn't know what it would be like. I mean, I've had, have I had, I've had like maybe a couple of white guys read my chart, but it's very like, very informal, very like quick, right? But Colby, yeah, he's that guy. He's that guy, Colby Barrett, he's that guy, yeah. Um, and it just, why I brought it up is that it made me feel so much more com- like comfortable and confident about my decision to um, stop posting on social media and to stop this podcast because I feel it in my fingers. Oh, I feel it in my toes. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck crease all around me. And I will come to blows. Yes. You know I'll cuss you. I always will. Don't try your luck. There's tea to spill. Wow. Freestyler on the microphone. Sorry. Sorry. It's just what my brain does. Um... <laughs> I felt it from last year you know before I went to Peru I made the announcement I was just like I would this podcast will be changing this that and the other like I I I started saying things but I didn't know what I was saying and where I was headed right and so through having this reading with him he said some things like he doesn't know what I'm on he doesn't know what I'm doing right he doesn't know much about me usually when I book these readings I don't even like put my name like that or whatever so anyway um it's only after the fact that we started following each other well yeah after the fact that we started following each other but um yeah he was like Pluto going into Aquarius means that celebrity the way that we understand celebrity is going to change people will stop looking at people who endlessly just flex with all of the expensive things that they've bought and the life that they're living and they're looking at who is of service to us all as a collective those become the for want of a better term the celebrities and so like it's okay for you to say that i feel like he basically was just like girl you can go on your website behind your paywall do whatever the hell that you're going to do but you're going to get drawn out at some point like you're going to get drawn back out at some point it's just the way it is like we choose our charts the the, you know it's like i'm going to go to earth and i'm going to forget absolutely everything i'm going to forget everything about divinity and the expanse of the cosmos i'm going to forget so i need something something that will remind me of certain things when i get there and that is exactly what your birth chart is right And so he was like, so yeah, in your human understanding right now, you'd be like, yeah, I'm going behind my paywall and I'm going to do this. And he's like, yeah, it's going to slap. It's going to, it's going to bang. That's those weren't the words that he used, but you get what I mean? He was just like, yeah, do what you're doing because it means that you feel way more. Basically, I'm so excited to, for what the website will entail because it just allows me a freedom that I don't feel like I currently have on socials like on in in the public sphere because anybody can grab hold of this podcast or my social media pages at any time and make any sort of interpretation of it so I'm limited to what I with what I share and how I express myself even though people feel like I'm confident and I say what I want and I say what I think I'm not a mad person I do that with 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 very very clear parameters in my mind like there are things that i could come on this podcast and say right now but do i want everything to crumble and burn down for other people not necessarily so being um able to have a space where i can just be more creative and vulnerable vulnerable is that buzzword you know is that that's the that's the term you know to be more vulnerable i need that space right and so that's where I want to be and so he was like yeah do that because it's it's great for you and I remember he was looking at my progress chart and he was just like this is the chart of a teacher you if you do do you teach like do you write like what I was like girl girl (laughs) and so I and I started to understand that 
more more than ever that that's what my platforms have been about learning things and then sharing what I've learned three five profile in human design right anyway um so yeah he said like do all of that do all of that but at some point you're still gonna get drawn out and you're not gonna have it like you're not the kind of person that somebody can draw out and then you're gonna stay quiet so you're and it wasn't so much of a drawing out as an individual person because you know I don't have time for that I like I literally hydrate off the tears of my enemies so it's not that but it's more of a vibe of like an institution or something will happen it's just like oh baby oh baby I love your ways you're gonna have to come and say something every day yeah so yeah it was just a really fascinating interaction I definitely want to kind of learn more based it's also interesting because it's kind of linked to what I I think I might want to study for my master's um so yeah that's also why it's interesting that when you know I mentioned in the video I made about Jeffrey Epstein and um, Prince Andrew the grand old Duke of Nantes um I mentioned you know yeah so we're in the final month of me being on socials and rah 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 and people were commenting like oh it's so sad that you're going and these people have pushed you out and you're going I was like cut please be, f- blah, 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 be fucking for real be fucking for real me somebody pushed me out the only the last person that pushed me out was my mother yeah (laughs) nobody else can push me any fucking place yeah the last person that we can have down on paper that pushed me out was christine yeah cool i'm not being pushed anywhere i'm choosing to leave i'm not gonna i don't want to be in the melee of the madness like I don't want to um and I know I can come back at any time but I I just feel like this is where I'm being called to go and everything is pointing that that is exactly the right way and the right path to follow it it wasn't I had the feeling but nothing about it was fleshed out and then the more I moved towards it the more the clearer things became um and so, yeah, I'm just very excited about it because also it means that, like, let's be speak practically here. I, because of what I say and how I say things, I won't get certain brand deals or brand deals, certain brand deals don't come to me and I, I don't do certain things. I'm fully self-produced. I'm fully self-funded in every aspect of my life. That's why it's a miracle. And I'm so thankful to God that I can really be out here um, doing the things that I want to do within reason, building a children's home in Nigeria, running my pole dance studio, doing all of these things just me right and of course I've got a team of people in various places that are helping with the things that they're doing but ultimately like this was what came out of my mind out of my heart and and it's here and and it keeps me so I'm very self-sustained I'm very self-contained you know all of that so because of that it just makes sense that I don't continue just flinging out things online and then other people are benefiting from my knowledge even though they'll go and chat shit elsewhere um they're benefiting from the things that I'm saying they go off to get paid because they all repurpose it in a more in with their palatable image and go on to do the things that they're doing and I'm still out here no if 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 we want my thoughts if we want my intellectual hoo-hahs we have to be on my we have to do it on my terms and I think that's only fair so yeah I'm very excited about that there's this tarot reader that I've really gotten into um she's so cute she's so I like her vibe because she reminds me in certain ways of me like she's just she doesn't do that whole like oh and I'm a tarot reader she's just very like let's get it let's go like she's uh, I like her I really like her and um yeah she's got a vibe a really cool vibe to her and she I was watching a couple of her readings like the most random ones I chose them years apart um I've actually had a personal reading from her but I chose them the ones on her um YouTube I chose randomly years apart and the same message kept coming out like yeah you're on to something great something big and then she said something like in both years apart she said um she kept singing this song um you know somewhere over the rainbow and I think that's why I was singing at the beginning and then she was like there's something about birds and there's a bird that when I used to live at my mum's in in the Nam 
um, there was a bird that I would always hear outside my window, and I still don't know which bird it is, but it, the its call is like chitter bop bop chitter bop bop chitter bop bop chit chitter bop bop chitter bop bop chitter bop bop chit. And then when I moved from my mum's, I didn't hear it anymore. And then in the last like year or so, I've started to hear it in Bermondsey chitter bop bop chitter bop bop chitter bop bop chit. And so I was just like, that's a sick bird. Wherever bird that is, I just like your vibe. It's got nothing to do with my girl, but anyway she was talking about birds and she was just like blue but she said something like blue birds but she was just like birds i just keep thinking about birds and um i've been thinking of what to call my actual members area so i'm going to get into what one of the shows is called shortly and i thought that what one of the shows was called is what the actual members area on my website would be called but it's not it's not it's not right and i've realized why and this is why spirit is so amazing like i i love god so much like god is truly my homie why so she's going on about this bird and then she starts um in both of these readings and then she says um she starts singing somewhere over the rainbow and i started thinking about somewhere over the rainbow and then i thought about where it says um what is it somewhere over the rainbow blue birds fly birds fly over the rainbow why then oh why can't i and i thought about that birds fly over the rainbow why oh why can't i and I wanted the page to represent that, the members area to represent somewhere over the rainbow. And then I started thinking about rainbows and I started thinking about kaleidoscopes and psychedelics and how sometimes when you are um, on psychedelics, like you see that sort of like kaleidoscope vibe. And so I thought about kaleidoscope rainbows. And then I started looking into the significance of why a lot of like psychedelic websites and things like that, they use the kaleidoscope. And I was reading about how um, the kaleidoscope, you know, based on how you move it can, can just show so many different facets and represents the many possibilities of the human experience. And I was just like, this is, this is exactly it. The vibe I'm on, where I'm moving towards, what's exciting me and calling to me, um, feels like an exploration of the many, many different possibilities of the human experience. Right. And so, I myself, as we all are, I'm a kaleidoscope, right? And then I thought, kaleidoscope, K-E-L, kaleidoscope, instead of K-A-L, kaleidoscope. I'm kaleidoscope. So basically, that's it. That's it. That's why. That's why. Like, look at the look at the journey. Look at the connection of the dots. What? Call me Doc Cotton, R.I.P. my G. Like, what madness. Like, just the connection of that. But the members area is called Kaleidoscope. Ow! And it, I still need to sort out the logo for it, though. Imagine this site is launching, essentially, at the end of this month, January 29th is when everything will be a bit like you can sign up for the members area it's launching then and um i still need to figure out a logo for kaleidoscope but i'll sort it out i always do i, I managed to do so much for the members area though um in the in the in the short space of time that i was away as well as tightening up the novel and taking lev out and about in portugal and sending out everybody's reading so no wonder i was like burnt the fuck out but i did it so yeah the members area is called kaleidoscope Ew. and so it's just going to be my world somewhere over the rainbow where you know th the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true like there's no there 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 is no sort of like oh that's ridiculous because fam the life that we're living right now th this is already turning out to be a long episode but the life that we're living right now it's all a game of make-believe. 
we make believe and put people in power who make believe an economy and they make believe currencies and they, and that everything's made believe and, they, and and make believe and then they tell you that you need to go to work and pretend in this pr pretend environment to earn pretend money so you can pay to live in a house on land that people are pretending to own like you know when we see children playing house and playing doctors and nurses like that's essentially what this life is that's a microcosm of what this life is we're playing pretend at a lot of things and uh, all every single rule is made up the the only rules are the are the the only rules and laws are the rules and laws of the universe the law of attraction you know all of these things um the gr law of gravity like you can't really fucking you know argue with that can, can you um the and cause and effect you know like these remain everything else is for the birds see what i did there <laughs> um so yeah i want to i'm excited about um having different shows essentially on kaleidoscope you know in behind the scenes i want to also have other people's things on there as well so there is a cute idea for a podcast um that could go on there as well but i feel like this podcast should actually be public it's not me I, i'm consulting on it and i'll be helping to make it but it's not me i'm not in it um so that's welcome there but but it, initially it's just me it's just my little world you know you know i say like oh Colette, it's me Kalechi in the place to be um the baby girl in the place to be that that's going to be the place to be um so fully excited about that it's going to be eight pounds a month to be there eight because i like the sign of eternity yeah i like the sign of eternity so that's the number eight and um the show so the first show that will be in the kaleidoscope members area it's called da -da -da -da! it's called baby girl meets world so yeah um <laughs> um i'm just gonna see if i can show you the image here oh. let me just pop this away here baby girl meets world bring that to the camera oh. what am i showing um i'm basically showing a little card um i've got a deck of cards made let me switch back to my camera so i've got a deck of cards made um because the premise of baby girl meets world is that this podcast as in say your mind has been instrumental um in my growth like it's been amazing for me to learn about myself um unlearn so many things learn more about the world but it's come to the point where i feel like i've learned so much about the world but i want to go out there and meet the world so this show you know how people are doing those tiktoks where they're stopping random people in the street and then just talking to them about some bullshit i'm not doing that i want to ask people questions i want to these people that i may never ever see again in my life i just want to ask them a uh, one question and see what con kind of conversation comes out of that so that will be released weekly um whichever conversation i end up having with whoever i happen to meet in the streets and i'm excited because i want to take it around the world one of the visions that i saw that's now making sense when i um went to peru and took part in the ayahuasca retreat was that i was asked to mm, see how many places my my well it, the actual thing that i said was that i need to meet one person a person from every country and be of service to them in one kind of way and i was like well i guess i kind of have it covered with social media and the voice was like don't try it girl get out there and i just didn't know how i was going to do it and i like i said i'm a rather shy person so interacting with people for the first time can kind of like throw me but i understand that that's where we're at now you know i part of the reason that we're seeing so much animosity and pain in the world is because 
people only know of their experience and they're unwilling to understand the experiences of uh, like the experiences of other people we know that there are certain things that it's just like right is right and wrong is wrong in that there are still other people's stories that i feel like having somebody talk with them whoever it might be one-on-one it just brings about so much richness and so yeah baby girl meets world will be me having these conversations so before i locked off patreon i asked my patrons um to tell me one thing one question that they would ask a complete stranger um to get to know them more deeply even if they'll never see that person again and they gave me such amazing suggestions so i used their suggestions and then added loads of my own and i've got loads of blank um cards like this um I've got loads of blank ones as well because I'm praying that when um, the more people I speak to, they will write a question for the next person and then the, everything gets added into this big sort of mini deck. It's very tiny, this deck, very small. Just fits, like it sits comfortably in the palm of my hand. It's a very tiny deck. It sits right in the middle, like the actual palm of my hand. Um, so like one of the questions here says, what's this one? What is love? what is love if you're not here with me what is love if it's not guaranteed um what is love i can't wait to see whoever gets that question um another question says um (laughs) <laughs> this is interesting if someone were to create an album that represents your soul which artists would you ask to sing on and convey the emotions of said album that's fascinating um one uh, another one here says um what physical place are you drawn to when you want to feel revived somebody else go wrote here or oh, sent me if you had a soul if you had sole ultimate control of the world for a day, what three things would you do? So there's so many. I love this one. What within you is asking for permission to be released? I love that. So many. So I'm going to take the cards out with me, shuffle them. I start this week, actually. Shuffle them and just have the conversations and share the conversations with you i feel like i was really inspired by like you know like pages like humans of ny humans of new york um looking at things like that like there is people are living breathing like novels they are stories we are all stories onto ourselves and it's sad because some books some novels never get opened and i want to see how many i can open you know so I'm really, really excited about Baby Girl Meets World um, to have that. And so it'll be like short, sweet, weekly. And also on the members area, um, we'll be on another day in the week. We'll have Meet Me at the Altar, um, which is meet me at the altar in your white dress. Hey, we ain't getting no younger girl, so we might as well do this. If you ever said that to me, I, I say it every time, but if somebody ever said that, like, we'll fight. So the only reason is like, well, I, we're not getting any younger, so we might as well get married. Fuck you. But um, no, meet me at the altar will be like the tarot um, insight space, you know, so i've kind of broken things up so i obviously i'm still continuing um, with my spiritual praxis so that'll be the you know where your tarot questions come in or whatever you know i don't like to call them dilemmas but the experiences that you're having that you want to share yeah so that will be where i do that and i can have a more free-flowing conversation and that breaks it up as well so you're essentially getting two podcasts a week instead of this one right um and it'll be you can listen to the audio as well because i've um, signed up for a private i managed the amount of research i had to do while i was in lisbon but i managed to find um the platform that allows me to post private podcasts so when you um come onto my page and then you sign up or whatever it will give you um 
a link, you click the link and it creates your own RSS feed and then you can drop that RSS feed onto um, whichever platform you listen on, except for Spotify. So you could use Apple Podcasts or wherever, you drop it onto there. And then as I'm releasing episodes every week, it automatically populates that, but only you will have it like it'll be your everybody's got their own unique one the reason that that was necessary is because if you create like for instance a private link on like soundcloud or wherever the hell it's just the one except for spotify i think they probably do like um unique ones to each subscriber but um you will just have one so even after somebody stopped being a member because they have the link they can still listen whereas this ha, i will just lock it off you move mad on the behind the paywall i'll lock it off you will not have access to that thing so everybody's got their own individual RSS feeds. And I just think that that is so sick. So, um, yeah, I'm fully excited about that. I can't wait for Baby Girl Meets World and Meet Me at the Altar. All under what? Kaleidoscope. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good things. Good things are gone. I'm so excited. Anyway, I feel like I've talked way too much. And um, I need to remind you as well, in case I haven't already, Radio 4 this Sunday, if you're listening to this on Monday when it comes out, Radio 4 this Sunday at 7.15 p.m. Um, will be POV, the sketch show that I wrote my little sketch for. So if you can listen, I'd appreciate it. I'd love your feedback on my sketch. I feel like I'm I'm like 12 minutes in. It's like a 30 minute, um, 28 minute sketch show. I'm like 12 minutes in, I think. But um, you'll listen to it. You'll, you'll hear it. You'll figure it out. But it's literally half an hour. So 7.15 on um, Sunday, 14th of January. Check it out. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, let's get to the tarot because I really was talking, but I had to give you all of those updates, I guess. Um, which is the letter? What's the letter I chose? Here we go. Submission for tarot reading by a French baby girl. A baby girl. Sorry about that. Um, hi, Kelechi. I hope you and your loved ones are well and that you are thriving. Um, let me start by saying how much I am grateful for you and your podcast. You truly are a blessing and I no longer dread Mondays thanks to Say Your Mind. You have inspired me to start therapy, challenge so many beliefs I was conditioned to hold and learn more about astrology. Um, I see your name. I'm a French baby girl of Benin and Togo descent. My pronouns are she, her. I'm 32 um you sent me your bits for my submission I would like to get a reading to get more clarity regarding my professional path which seems so uncertain and scary and my romantic life which is non-existent but for which I wish to start exploring more where am I uh, going regarding my career and am I ready to tackle romantic relationships a bit of a backstory I moved to the UK back in 2015 for work and hopped from jobs to jobs and city to city, building a somewhat stable but dull as hell and unfulfilling life. I felt like life was passing me by as I um, as I stopped myself from truly experiencing love, sensuality and sex out of fear of the unknown and fear of being judged for my lack of experience on my professional path. My professional experience in e-commerce allowed me to build a comfortable life, but it was never something I truly enjoyed. And as the panoramic um, happened <laughs> and pressure from work started to get worse up, I started hating this field. I, I kept at it and went through the motions until my last employer turned out to be very toxic. Um, this led me to burning out and deciding to just leave everything. I resigned, ended the lease on my flat and fled the UK to move back to my mum's in Paris six months ago. Before resigning from my old job, which was fully remote, my original plan was to change my work contract to become freelance and move to Portugal. Ha! Look at that, where my brother lives. This country is great vibes and I just felt like I could really enjoy life there. Plus, the food is banging, lol. But after resigning, I had to put that on hold to focus on resting and figuring out what the heck I'm doing and what the heck I'm going to do with my life. I know I love do um I know I love the arts mu most especially drawing painting live music dancing I also love traveling and cooking 
Doing all these things brings me so much joy, but I still don't know how to find a career path that would allow me to do something I truly enjoy while being able to sustain myself. I'm also a very anxious and a professional procrastinator. So this mix is not good at all when trying to figure out what to do and where to start. I've worked in a corporate environment all my life and moving to another field is a scary prospect, but I do know that corporate life will never truly fulfill me. On my non-existent love life, I started seeing a therapist back in 2019 and with her help, we tackled the reason why I have uh, never had a romantic relationship despite yearning to do so deep inside. I know I'm attracted to both men and women and I do feel sexual arousal, but for a long time, I was sleepwalking through life, just not initiating any romantic relationships and rebuffing any attempts. At first, during the teenage years, I was just laser focused on school and friendships and would brush off romantic relationships as trivial. And then as I got older and questions started to arise from family and friends, I would just evade the subject or just flat out lie about a boyfriend abroad or secret past relationships. The truth is that I was and still am afraid of intimacy. I also feel like my very codependent relationship with my mother stumped my growth in this area. I was very comfortable in the good daughter role and I knew that having a boyfriend or coming out as bi would shatter that to an extent. Now, here I am, 32, back at my mum's, single, lonely and horny as fuck. Lol. I do want to start being braver and explore romantic relationships but it seems like everyone my age has so much more experience and I hear so many horror stories from my friends I just don't know how I can get the confidence to just put myself out there and if I am even ready for all of that I hope my ramblings make sense and thank you for reading this long ass letter lol all the best a French baby girl thank you so much for sending that through I hear you. I hear you on the fear of intimacy. I hear you on all of it. I hear you. So um, I pulled up your chart. I haven't looked, but let's just see. I put, you sent your um, details. So I wanted to see what was happening with your, um, you, what you said about your mum. What's interesting, so, so interesting about this is that in your chart, you're a Leo rising, right? And you've got Venus in Leo in the first house. So I know you're sexy. Like, I... Like, I can bet if somebody asked me to put money down right now, I can bet money on the fact that you're sexy. And I said this to somebody else. Um, I was doing a private reading for somebody um, who got the, you know, you can buy the gift cards on my website. So we were doing this reading and I said, like, I could only see her face, right? I could only see her face. Like, her, yeah, because we were on Zoom. And she's got Venus in the first house, but she's got Venus in the first house in Taurus. And I said to her, Venus in the first house, you're an attractive person. Like, of course, I see your face, but your body, you've got an attractive body because Venus is beauty, right? It's beauty. It's beauty. It's allure. You could think like some of your favorite celebrities that you just think are so beautiful. They usually have like Venus or like some yeah, usually like Venus in um, the first house or maybe even the eighth. Right. Um, or the 11th. So I'm saying to her, you're sexy, like you're, 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 you're an attractive person. And because it's Taurus, I feel like it's to do with your, and before, as we, were, we both went to say at the same time, your body, like, I feel like with Venus, you've got like a hourglass, Venus and Taurus, you've got like an hourglass. She was like, oh my God. Yes. She's like, yes. Like, yes. She's like, I've got a, like, I get lots of compliments on because initially I said to her, do you get lots of compliments based on how you look? And she's like, mm, yeah, I guess so. But, you know, where I live in the world, you know, I feel like they say it because I'm a foreigner. Um, and then when we went into it more, she was like, yeah, pretty much all my life where people would compliment me is like my body. Like I've got, a, you know, I'm curvy. So with you having your Venus in Leo in the first house, I'm going to take a, a wild guess and say that you've got really nice hair, like you've got really, there's something about your hair, there's something about your hair, your eyes, you must, you might have really like hair or eyes, you've just got really nice hair, eyes, teeth, there's something about it and yeah, that's what I'm picking up with the Venus in um, Leo, so we know that this isn't a case of like what you look like, as you've stressed, you have 
not once have you mentioned that oh I feel insecure about what I look like it's a deeper it's an internal thing that's taking place but what's interesting about that Leo um Venus is that it directly opposes your moon you've got your moon in Aquarius in the seventh house so your moon opposing your Venus moon represents the mother so your your ability to access your sensuality is being opposed by your mother's kind of presentation when you were growing up so however your mother presented herself is what it is actually opposed to who you are or what or how you would um, like to um, express your sensuality and your sexuality and when I look at oppositions, I don't think about them as just like, oh, all they can be is conflict. This is a this is an opportunity for growth, right? This is an opportunity for growth. So it's important that you do have this conversation with your mum. Fam, you're 32. You're a big girl out here. You're a big woman. Like, you've got to have the conversation with your mum because that very thing that you're scared of will be what liberates you. How, if if you can't talk like you say that you have this codependent relationship with your mom I guess like this very close and meshed sort of dynamic with your mother that fear that your mom will not accept you is the same fear that you have therefore when it comes to relationships so you have to go back to source you have to go back to the source which is to address the conversation with your mother and whatever happens from there you can then chart your way forward but that sense of stagnancy will persist because the that because of that v venus and moon opposition and because that moon is in the seventh house of where you have relationships and sign contracts and you make commitments it's going to have a strong influence like i bet that when you're meeting people in your mind you're like oh i don't know if my mum would like them and so that's holding you back if my mum would approve your mum has her life. Your mum has had a life before you came along and she'll continue to have a life. So you can't live your life for your parents. You have to live your life for yourself. And so if the presence of what you think your mum would think or whatever's going on with your mum means that you, you're self-sabotaging and, and limiting your opportunities to um, mature and grow through romantic relationships and dynamics, then you're living a quarter of a life which you know because you said about you know you felt like you were sleepwalking so it's important I would say for you to have that conversation with her um and have it soon because there is a lot for you to explore out here I feel like travel although I called um, Buhari a travel blogger in a pejorative way, I feel like travel blogging would be really, really good for you. You're a fiery person, um, you know, with that Leo ascendant and the Venus there. Like, there's so much to explore there. And then you've got, what is this, Mars in Gemini. And Gemini is about communication and putting things out there. Um, look at that. You've got Mars in Gemini, right? Um, which Gemini is like communication, it's, um, you know, personalities, it's, um, it's broadcasting to a certain degree, um, it's writing. So I feel like that Mars is what drives you in the 10th house. Like you are a driven person. You're not, you, even though you call yourself like a, like a professional procrastinator, you're only procrastinating because what it, the thing is, is not what you want to do right but if you got to travel I think that you'd find the energy back and then if you documented your travel Mars and Gemini in the 10th house that would be really really beneficial to you because that your midheaven where we see it is just there by the ninth house right and so there's an element of you teaching people what you learn from traveling and you've already got your experience from e-commerce as well. So it's a, an amalgamation of the skill set that you've already built to then do what you enjoy. Right. And then we think about Gemini where Mars is in the 10th house and how um, Ge um, Gemini is ruled by um what is it? Mercury. Mercury is in Virgo in your second house um, next to your sun. So that tells me that the money that you because the second house is also about our talents and our resources that we get to keep that we that we um self-cultivate the eighth house is what's given to us by other people so 
with that mercury there is telling us that communication is also part of your talent so, so communication being part of your talent being next to your son would indicate that whatever is going to make you money actually has to be about you it has to be you not you behind the scenes it has to literally be you you are the you are the product you are the brand that's what I would say anything um, anyway regarding your career. And then when we look at your fifth house of creativity, um, Neptune's there and Uranus is there. And Uranus being in your fifth house um, regarding your creativity makes me think that sudden change, frequent change is good for you. Being, um, a, f being a freelancer is better for your mental health, I would say, in my opinion. Like being a freelancer is better for you because... Um, yeah, because committing, staying committed to a particular role, I think it saps you of your energy. And then we've got Pluto here, square your ascendant. So there is something about your attractiveness, you being out there, you being seen, that actually kind of makes people a bit obsessed with you. That's kind of needed. That's a little bit necessary if you're going to have... Um, you know, if you're going to have some prominence with doing something, I don't know how you feel about that, but you know, that's what I'm, you know, that's what I'm getting from this anyway. And I think it's a great look. Your North node is um, opposing Jupiter and you've also got Jupiter in Leo. So girl, like get it together, get it together. You're sexy, you're abundant, right? And there is something about you being seen by people as you because Jupiter also rules travel the way that Mercury does as well and Jupiter looks at spirituality and magnifying and expanding things right so there is something about travel and there's something about sh sharing because Jupiter can also be the teacher sharing although we consider sometimes Saturn being the teacher but Sa Jupiter rules Sagittarius Sagittarius is the house of um is the sign usually of higher learning and teaching so when we consider that that you've got Jupiter in Leo um as well as your ascendant being in Leo and then we've got that Venus in Leo girl do something about it do something about it get go and make your first trip going to live with your brother in Portugal for a bit make videos about the food and all of that or write about the food and take pictures um uh of what you're doing because it will be useful for you um yeah i feel like it will be useful for you um and post that and then go to a next place and do the same thing and go to a next place and do the same thing you're a tree you're not a tree rather you can move so get out there get out there and get moving that's just from looking at the um astrology and i guess i've already kind of talked about your relationships by saying what i said regarding your mum to free up yourself you need to free up yourself from your mum but let's see what the tarot cards are saying anyway um let me switch cameras okay let's see what we've got from the tarot so what is the advice i'm going to pull three cards oh they were pulling themselves they said don't you dare three cards for um f your professional life and then i'm going to pull three cards for your personal like your um romantic life right so the three cards for your professional life we've already got the two of swords i'm oh, sorry two of swords look at my mouth two of wands that flipped out straight away so it was like spirit was like get her get her jan travel because this figure in this card she's holding she's sitting on the boot oh she's sitting on the boot of her car Oh, you know, in the front of her car and she's holding a map and she's looking across the water to some mountains, kind of deciding where to go next. Um, I'll, and yeah, she's deciding where to go next. It feels like she might, you know, when they say, ah, Omar, you don't miss road. Like you've gone another path. You've gone another way off, off, off piste or whatever. You've gone off. Right. And this is you finding your way back. But what's beautiful is that you recognize that you'd gone off course. Oh, nice. Yeah, you recognize that you've gone off course. And yeah, because of that recognition, 
you you've written in and now you're course correcting right so we've got two of wands which is a fire sign you're a leo rising right we've got that and then we've got the queen of wands which is you which is so beautiful queen of wands about again because you're a leo rising it's about um creativity and she's got a sunflower here and a black cat sitting on her shoulder and i love these cards together because it's almost like the two of wands the figure in it she was the younger version of the queen of wands and because they still got the same sky behind them right they've still got the same sky behind them and so this is where she's grown from um and she's drawing she's painting so i feel like another thing that you can consider is that when you are doing these travels find a beautiful scene that really catches your eye paint it paint it and then sell the paintings right and um, set up an etsy shop because you've got that aquarius seventh house set up an etsy shop or whatever the case may be and sell these paintings from the different places that you go um ahead to you know that you go and see and um, that's a way to generate money for yourself there's something about flowers here as well because i'm seeing i'm you know i'm looking at the um sunflower so there's something about following the sun like i always say um and you know i've got that tattoo on my thigh that says um europe is not it doesn't say all of this europe is not my center why be a sunflower and turn towards the sun when i myself am the sun you need to remember that with that sun in virgo and with you being a leo rising the only sign in the zodiac that's ruled by the sun you're a baby girl you're a g you shine bright like a diamond like not a blood diamond unfortunately um but you shine bright so you need to really hone in on that energy and be as creative as you want to be um you're gonna have to let go of the ways that you thought that life was gonna work just like i said earlier a lot of this stuff that we're doing we're playing pretend right we're playing pretend it's not actually we don't have to stick to any rules if we don't want to like do your thing we've got the eight of swords here um which is um usually speaks about denial and self delusion um um uh kind of like a prison of our own making right but we can get out at any time so you're being told with when it comes to your professional life you're not necessarily stuck in a rut it's just the fact that you are currently not looking at all of your assets and your skill sets you're not seeing how they can be utilized in slightly different ways the path that you've taken was the path to take to get all of these things so you see how you were jumping from job to job you're ideally meant to jump um, jump from country to country right city to city you go back to your mum's because you go back to your mum's because that's where it feels safer and it's essentially it's like somebody else is making your decisions for you and so it you have to first of all have that conversation with her so you can free yourself and so you can see what um, else is out there um, in the world. Now, let's see regarding your romantic life. Three cards for that. Oh, two of swords. See, I said two of swords and I didn't even know it was going to come out. Look at that. Two of swords. Just like your first one was two of um, wands. So with your two of swords, it's like where you're two of wands, you're looking at where to go. Two of swords, you're not even trying to see where to go. It's like you, like you already said that's way too many cards spirit i'm not doing all of that so i've put that back in the deck um two of swords you said yourself about a fear of intimacy and that's what the two of swords um shows us somebody um, a figure crossing two swords in this deck that i'm using the truth hurts deck and they're crossing the swords over oh, they're crossing the two knives over their heart and they're wearing like a leather is it like a varsity jacket and they've got like a blue blind blindfold and they've got red hair which is interesting makes me think again about leo um in the first house with and venus in leo that red hair that fiery hair i love that yeah the star card in reverse comes out here talking again about you i said to you like you're a star star girl right um the star card comes out here about healing number 17 one seven equals eight the f at the top you got two of wands and then eight of swords two eight at the bottom for your um, um your romantic life you've got two of swords and then you've got the star which is 17 seven plus one eight so you're there there is a mirror here there is a mirror like what's happening in your professional what seems like oh yeah i see what you did there spirit um, you've got the moon card that came out with the knight of cups in reverse thank you spirit so um, more cards came out for your um, romantic life because they were like girl you better tell her you better tell her all right so 
Um, the star card came out in re reverse because there is healing that you are delaying. There is healing that you need to do that you are delaying. And the star card, the woman is naked and she's pouring from a jug, from two jugs. So it's given Aquarius, which is your seventh house of committed partnerships, right? So she's pouring from there, um, from, from two jugs. She's pouring one jug into the water and she's pouring one jug into the land. And... Um, I feel like these are, are they meant to be swans? No, they look like cranes. It's like cranes in the sky. You know when she says, I try to fuck it away. I, or she just said, I tried to sex it away. Sorry, I made up new lyrics. But you're avoiding doing the work by doing everything else other than being naked to yourself and allowing yourself to feel vulnerable, right? And that vulnerability also means addressing your mum about certain things right and I don't know how well you get on with self-pleasure as in masturbating but I would really really suggest that you explore more um touching yourself get a head start it's not you're not going to wait till you finally start dating somebody that now you'll be like oh what does this button do <laughs> like no start feeling on yourself like know what you like know where your pleasure points are I mean the beauty of like relationships is that you discover new parts new things that you didn't know you like you know when you're exploring with other people but for you right now you need to know and I just get the vibe from your letter that I don't think you um practice much self-pleasure but I'd really encourage you to I know you might be like oh but I'm back at my mum's there is this toy I got a new toy recently I saw it online and I was just curious and it's like is it that rose the the rose look it up you'll you'll find it you'll find it it's like a rose right it looks like a rose and then it's got like a vi another end to it that's like a uh, tulip shape but it's just like that it goes inside the vagina and then the rose part stays on top of your clit and then you've got two um buttons one for that um one that's gone inside and then one for the rose which um is like a um, clitoris massager yo yo I, sorry if i hurt your eardrums when i did that but my god wow get involved get involved um but also be careful of the sellers that you buy it from because i don't know like what batteries they put in these things but um i can't even remember where i got mine from but let me t i just know it's sick i just know that so i encourage you to can you know in the first instance of about us thinking about alleviating your horniness i would suggest more self-pleasure and if you can look up that rose or whichever sex toy that you prefer because some people don't like the feeling of penetration so you might just want the because i think that they do just the rose top the like the clip massager they do that just on its own um i don't even know if i can show this on youtube because i've been seeing a lot of tarot readers like censoring images and stuff so i'm just holding it up for ages bloody hell sorry about that i don't even know if youtube will allow for it to be shown um but yeah so the star is about healing that you're delaying so i'm just looking at the um the water that she's pouring into the these two places so you have to nourish your physical world as well as your spiritual world um and yeah have those conversations that you need to have with your mother because that's literally the next card the moon represents mother right and so that card comes out and it's saying that you um you are inhibited from um feeling the things that you need to feel because you're so worried about i wonder is your mama cancer like a cancer sign um or pisces um but you're you're limiting yourself from feeling certain things you don't even you're wearing masks you're wearing masks around your mother you she doesn't really know you and that's the thing if we are hiding who we are uh, who we truly are from our caregivers from those who we consider to be home then how do how can we show up in the world how can we um you know no validation for our true selves that we would present in relationships if we can't even present it to the people who um essentially birthed us right um that knight of cups in reverse because i get this energy that there's somebody that would like to move towards you anyway some kind of water sign person maybe that would want to move towards you but for this to happen and it's going to happen regardless but for it to be something that feels fruitful there's so much water here for it to feel fruitful you have to do the work of addressing what you need to address with your mum i hope that helps i'm out here using 
using astrology and tarot to give the um, advice. Um, here we've got from the Dickhead and Recovery Affirmation card deck, we've got to love me and to be loved by me is an honour in this lifetime. And I stand by that 10 toes down. I stand on that. Like I'm standing on business, okay? To love me and to be loved by me is, a, is, a, is an honour in this lifetime. It's an honour for you to um, allow somebody to love you um, and um, to be loved. So allow yourself to feel what that is like. Don't hold yourself back, right? Um, so I pray that that resonates with you. Thank you for writing in. I look forward to doing more questions like that um, for Meet Me at the Altar when we um, transition to my site come the end of January. Very excited for that. Um, so anyway, let's get to share your magnificence for the, oh, sorry. If you want to have, what time is it now? Wow, I'm really talking. If you want to have a a one-to-one -one tarot reading with me via zoom you can buy a gift card for 111 pounds from my website i know so many of you have bought um them and um vanessa has been adding you to my calendar i keep seeing the names build and uh, you know piling up um if that's like girl that is way too much for me you can buy one question tarot reading that's 22 pounds on my website so you ask one simple straightforward question I love when you lot give me backstories and you give me like context because it means that what I send you back is you know way more in depth so I send you back an audio recording of what your reading is so that's 22 pounds one question it's not and it has to be a specific question not like what does the year hold for me it's you know very specific about things like have so some people send me things like should I go for this job this you know should I leave this um course should I is that the, are things going to work out with this person like those things they're very very specific so I know what you're asking me if you say what does the year hold for me that's the general reading that's a massive reading you know um so one specific question and um yeah that's 22 pounds um and then that's it I don't currently plan on offering um any kind of like you know like the similar service that I had on Patreon I don't plan on offering that on the website so um thus far I'm only seeing um or fulfilling the uh the kind of the people who bought yearly um readings um, who bought an annual membership from me and we're paying the equivalent of £33 a month where I send the month ahead readings. I'm still going to honour those. So I'm going to see all of those. I'm still going to be sending them their month ahead readings. But they are relatively smaller than people who are paying on a monthly basis, basically. So I won't be um, doing much of that. But you can get your £22 or you can get the 111 and we'll have a Zoom conversation for 45 minutes. And we'll go through um, all the things that are happening with you. I've been enjoying them because they just feel more free flowing. Um, but that's that. Share your magnificence. My share your magnificence is you. Baby, all I want is you. Yeah. No, it's actually you. Big man ting. I'm reading so much about how during the Christmas period, um, going into the new year, so many people um trigger warning trigger warning suicide right um <clears throat> so many people take their own life um or are considering it because the world is a really 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 tough place and I just felt called to when I was looking at my share your magnificence today I'm just like I'm talking about all of these people out there in the world you know these celebs or just people doing great great things right and every once in a while I like to remind you that you are great and I'm so glad that you're here I who like this won't be applicable to everybody because some people are like I'm having a great time in my life and do you never know where you might need it but you can always come back to this episode and know that me personally, I think you're great. And I'm really, really grateful for every day that you decide to stay on this hellscape known as Earth. Sooner or rather than later, a lot more of us will be thinking about the fact that this might be a simulation. And you keep choosing to plug in. And for that, you know, I'm grateful but it matters a lot. It does matter a lot that you're here. Um, it's not easy seeing so much pain, so much travesty 
yeah, like so many travesties in the world and so many atrocities in the world and feeling sometimes helpless. And then in your own personal life, maybe feeling helpless about the other things that you feel like you can't control. You know, this might be happening with this family member. Some We so badly want to fix things for people that we love, for them to feel OK, for not for them to not be in pain, for them not to be suffering in any way and for them to not maybe keep making the same decisions that we feel are harmful to them over and over again. Or you might be that person person and you feel the pain of knowing that other people want you to choose differently and you somehow just feel like you can't um and I feel like what made me think about this was Kid Fury obviously he doesn't listen to this podcast doesn't know that it exists I mean Crystal knows obviously she came to the live show in New York and we all know that that was the podcast that actually got me into podcasting the read um and I listen to him sometimes and my heart really aches for him. I don't think he's, I'm, I'm still quite a bit behind. I kind of stopped listening around April, but I'm now back um, catching up on episodes. And it was really useful while I was cooking for Christmas and, you know, doing certain things um, around New Year's and going, you know, when I had some spare time and when I was cooking, I had um, Laurence actually came around like last night and I made like jollof rice. I made some chicken. I made some prawn balls, all of this stuff. And, I was listening to the podcast while I was cooking. You know, I love like being able to do that. And I just think to myself, this incredibly brilliant human being, this amazing man, the funniest man, one of the funniest men ever that has gotten me like out of some dark times, you know, to be able to listen to his podcast and laugh like he's so witty. He's so talented. Yet he'll have times when he really really doesn't want to be here anymore and I can't forget that episode where it was such a great funny episode and at the very end out of nowhere he just burst into tears and just talked about how difficult he'd been finding everything and that showed me that like no matter what people present on the surface we never really know what they're going through and how much of a toil and um a major decision it is every time they chose like they choose to keep letting their heart continue to beat um so I'm just saying to those people who are out there that might just need to hear it today or any other day like I'm so grateful for every day that you choose to let your heart beat I'm so so grateful that despite all of the things that are happening um, and how painful sometimes things can be and sometimes people only have these feelings momentarily maybe they're going through a breakup or you know something uh, happening with family members or maybe it's a job situation or maybe it's just a culmination of absolutely everything and they just don't see how they're going to go on um you don't have to see the whole thing right just please keep holding on to the banister and just taking one step at a time even if you can't see the whole staircase just hold on to the banister and take one step at a time and I'm and I'm thankful that even when you're not quite sure of continuing with this life you choose to at least let me my voice on a Monday be a part of the time that you are choosing to share with us so thank you so, so much. And two slaps on your chest because things aren't easy out there. The world is very, very wild. And um, I just I just want you to know wherever you are, just sending my vibes to your vibes um, and letting you know that I appreciate that you are here. That's all. I just felt called cool to say that. Um. Well, after that bit of positivity, let's get into some fuckery. Um, I was, I haven't watched the full thing. I haven't watched the full, um, Cat Williams interview with Shannon Sharp, <laughs> Shay Shay. That is such an interesting term or name to have for a show. I haven't watched the whole thing, but I definitely feel like he was probably not the best person to interview Cat Williams because Cat Williams is so witty. He will run rings around a person. I feel like I could interview Cat Williams. I feel like we've got similar energy. He's a Virgo sun, Aquarius moon, something like we don't have similar placements, but we've got similar vim we've got similar vim like I, I i feel it um 
Although they, um, so I think it was Angelica Ross that said that he said something pro- problematic when he get made a kind of analogy or whatever about Gaza. So that wasn't good, child. That was not great. But I haven't gotten there. Um, but with this, um, in the Shannon Sharp interview, um, he's talking with Cat Williams, and it was just fascinating. It's like two hours and forty six minutes of Cat Williams just dragging everybody Cedric the Entertainer Steve Harvey Kevin Hart like he was um what is his name uh who was the one that he first started with Stevie no it wasn't Stevie he started with somebody shot and he was cussing them first and foremost and he was just going in I said yeah 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 like I flogged people on this show, but the way that Cat Williams was flogging, he flogged with receipts. He flogged. He kept bringing out a receipt after receipt. With two. And this, this here is for this flogging. And then this here is for this flogging. He was going in. But with some of the things that stuck out to me for the, the bits that I did catch, he said, race isn't where we draw the line. It's God's side or the other side. He was saying that regarding the fact that People have tried to cancel him, blackball him in the industry for years. Like when you look at where he is to where all of the other comedians and people are, then they're not in the same spaces. And that's because he was like, I called out R. Kelly. I think he said he called out Michael Jackson. He's called out various people, right, in the like for their ways. And that gets you shunned. You know, he he he'd in some ways talked about like Jeffrey Epstein and all of these things like he's mentioned these sorts of things in the past even his example about um how America when it's going to war on other countries will talk about oh we killed however many insurgents today and then the average person listening will be like oh I don't know no insurgents but not because they're using terminology that will have you feeling okay and desensitize you to the fact that they're going out and committing genocide right so um he was saying how people expect you to be like oh but you're black i'm black so why are you trying to stop me from getting my bag with these problematic um spaces and brands aren't we black like why are you calling me out aren't we black men together and he's like there'll come a point where race what's race got to do with it essentially it's either you're doing fucked up shit or you're not. And if you're doing fucked up shit, I don't care what colour you are. I'm going to call it out. And I really, really rate that because that's very much Pluto in Aquarius um, energy. And he's moon in Aquarius. Ooh. And then Pluto is... Yeah. And he, um, that, that's his vibe. Like, I'm not doing up, oh, quote unquote, black excellence and black this and black that when all you're doing is becoming another minion of white supremacist hegemony. Like, No. I'm not doing it. So I really, you know, I, I liked that statement. It stuck out to me. Um, yeah, I wrote it here when he called out R. Kelly, Michael Jackson and Harvey Weinstein. And he, yeah, he said that Harvey Weinstein in front of people. And this is how rape culture is so um, pervasive within the entertainment industry. Because he said that Harvey Weinstein offered to suck his dick in front of, he said it in front of, you know, tv executives and film executives and and nobody batted an eyelid and he was like oh move like what um but then he said that when he got to set he saw that there were three uh, two other black men there and he was like so in his back of his mind he's thinking like what did you did you like say yes like what it, yeah it just goes to heart to show that harvey weinstein was really out here he didn't give an he didn't give an echo didn't give a damn and that's why he needs to stay in that prison i'm really pissed off that oscar pistorius has been released on parole and bbc i think it was bbc africa wrote something like oh fallen hero oscar pistorius is um released what about rena that he killed his wife that he killed what what about her like oh god anyway i'm coming off subject um he said kevin hart is a plant that made me laugh he dragged cedric um he said that steve harvey was wearing a wig all that time that was hilarious to me um he said that steve harvey called oceans 11 or is it ocean sort to take bernie mac's place once bernie mac had passed um what he said here was interesting to me when he said that behind my back people will just be talking all kinds of things but to my face uh, to my face i'm royalty um and i and i and i 
and I resonate with that, that there are people who can have so much to say about me sometimes online or with their group chats or whatever the case may be in with and kiki with their friends but when you see me you 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 don't have that energy you you don't because you know what fucking time it is right and it's interesting how many people sent me this interview and they were like you need to watch this collection there are so many things that um cat williams is saying that's really reminding me of all of the things that you've been saying for a while now and you know i have like i said i haven't watched the full thing but ultimately the veil has been lift, lifted and celebrity isn't going to function the way it has been so many people are going to crumble just because they weren't mentioned overtly currently in that epstein list doesn't mean that their time isn't now that's why you're seeing diddy getting his flogging and all these other people is now coming like there is going to be so much because and so many people are going to they're going to go through an identity crisis because they don't know who they are outside of worshiping these celebrities and so when oh oh download the ross clark thing oh okay i've got a message then when some of you when it comes to tarot and astrology and all of them things there you lot like to go oh but god said in the bible worship no other god but me and you know don't worship false idols and so all of these cards the astrology the this the that that's going away from god first of all shut the fuck up first of all do that second of all right celebrities you lot will have so much to say when it comes to tarot and and this and that but you will suck on the balls of celebrities you love a celebrity oh my god joe oh my god like you love a celebrity and i'm mentioning joe budden because i talk about him and his comments um about um vanessa bryant when he went on joe budden's podcast um dr umar made some bullshit comments so that's what i'm thinking about that the fact that Joe Budden, people like Joe Budden, people like um, R, uh, P. Diddy, like all of, like, it's like when I cussed out that Ben Anderson guy, like, you lot love celebrities so much. They're infallible to you. They are normal, everyday people that shit and piss just like you, right? But you'll put them on this pedestal where no matter what they do, they are still so great to you. And the light skinned, the more light skinned they are, my God, my God you will you can you will refuse to hear anything those are the idols that you were told not to worship the, those were the gods that you were told not to worship because when god was talking about worship no other god but me let's think about it god as source as this infinite being that created us all right and we you know we, we're an offshoot of that we are created in god's image so if to worship as it were quote unquote you would worship oneself as in you would you would be in reverence to your own divinity because you understand that it's a reflection of the eternal divine like you would you would understand that 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 it's a reflection of eternal consciousness so when you know when they say like in um when they say namaste the god in me um honors the god in you that is what we're asked to do but some of you aren't honoring the god in yourselves but you you project and you worship and you uh, and and show reverence to these people who do sweet fuck all to your in your everyday life they do nothing for you they don't care about you in your dynamic with them it's purely extractive you think that you're getting something you think that there's reciprocity because maybe you get a podcast or maybe you get um uh, um uh, some merchandise or maybe you get a, a, a concert or maybe you get a tv show whatever the case may be you think that there's reciprocity when actually it remains an extractive economy it remains an extractive dynamic you are the one being taken from your life force your energy your attention is being directed their way and their di their energy, their life force, their attention is not being directed your way. Something to consider just came to me there. Um, 
And so then he says something about they pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. And that's why we're finding so many people now, these same celebrities, can't say things, say anything really about what's happening um, to the Palestinians, what's happening um, across the world. They can't really say anything because they don't know what's happening in Sudan, what's happening um, in Congo. Like they can't say, even when... Um, Israel went and did a madness in Lebanon, like clearly trying to start something like they can't, people can't say much right now because they know where their checks are coming in from. And so sometimes you have to look at these, like for specifically black celebrities and be like, who, what are, who is paying you not to talk? And is it worth it? Because what's going to happen is, some kind of resolution we're going to come to some kind of resolution at some point with with this and that's when people are going to be like oh i'm so glad and did it that's when they're going to speak because they now feel like it's a safe point to speak but no time be up before that and then um he said something that got me where he said yes it's easier to juice than get in the gym but you don't get to bring that body over here talking crazy And I feel like what he's talking about there is still related to this fact that people pay you to not talk about the things that they don't want you to talk about. Because what you consider success and what I consider success are very different things. Because I know that my integrity is instrumental to what I deem to be success and satisfaction. For you, it's a paycheck. Of course, we we all want paychecks. We all need the pretend money because we need to participate in the pretend life, right? So we all need it. But at what point? It just it just gets very sticky because I understand the need for the pretend money because we're all having to participate in this pretend life. But I want a real life. I want a real, real life. I'm working at building a real life, right? So you can't bring your pretend life with your pretend money to me and compare the two and be like, oh, why is Kalechi still there? After all she's done with this and that and she's still there, I'm here. I'm here because it's exactly where God needs me to be. And where you are, baby, it's not, it's not solid ground. It's not. And you'll find out soon enough. So, I mean, I'll go and watch the rest of that, but I just wanted to share that for so you mad um Halle Bailey announced that she's had her baby she named the baby Halo um she really felt like she kept that a secret that's what some people are saying but I I think that she was aware that people knew of course people kept commenting on her nose the size of her belly when she'd be going at places they even commented on her postpartum walk at some point so it's not so much that she felt that she was hiding it, but she was setting a clear boundary, letting you know that if I don't want to talk about something, I will not talk about it with you. Even if you can clearly see my bump, I go, if, and you ask me, I'm not going to talk, I don't want to talk about it with you. And I really like that she exercised that level of um, agency and autonomy to just be like, yeah, no, no, it's not, it's not a group conversation my pregnancy it's not a group conversation and now the baby's here she was like I know some of you were so many of you were so um you know will be so excited to meet him because people were speculating and pond speculating there you go um then I saw this about the Boeing 737 it says here thousands oh that's another thing I forgot to say now that I'm onto planes yo I didn't know that white people clap when the plane lands but I think it's because when we were coming back from um Portugal when we're coming back from Lisbon the weather was really bad on the 2nd of January, was really bad in London. High winds, very, 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 very um, bad. And so they told us ahead of time, our flight was delayed. While our flight was delayed, I saw about that um, airplane crash in Japan. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, like, this is really sad. Like, oh, my God. Um, so, but And I'm about to get on a plane with my child. So I was like, oh. Um, but, you know, God protect us, bless us. So we're on the plane now, very much a smooth ride until we get into the bad vibes space, the bad, bad vibes space, the airspace that is London. The turbulence was ridiculous. Ridiculous. Lev, he napped instantly. I don't know, maybe it's that baby mechanism thing where, like, if they notice something, I don't even know if he noticed, he just instantly went to sleep and maybe it was his spirit self that was like, oh, come on, pilot, let's land this properly. Um, But the turbulence was horrible. 
and there was a white woman sat next to me and she was trying to like grip onto my arm i said sis like i was thinking like your boo is across the aisle hold his arm like what but it was really like yo everybody went silent because you know when you have that real realization like if shit goes left do I remember what they were showing me in that safety demonstration at the beginning? Yay, Jesus Christi, Oluwami. Like, what is going... Woo! Ah! Damn. Ah! Woo! Jesus. Jesus of the aeronautical engineers. Thank you. Because we managed to. The pilot landed on the first try and he made sure to let us know that. He said, bitch... There are like there, the reason we were delayed from even landing was because there were other um, airlines and you know aircrafts that couldn't make it the first time that they tried to descend. But me, me, I brought us down, down to the ground. I did that, I did that, and we clapped. But it was, <laughs> it just goes to show everybody was really like ah. But God said not that day, not that day. We thank the Most High. Woo. That was something. So imagine my surprise when I read that thousands of passengers face flight cancellations after major US airlines grounded dozens of Boeing jets after a mid-flight blowout over Oregon. The US aviation regulator, as we move to Pluto in Aquarius, the US um, aviation regulator said 171 Boeing 171 Boeing 737 Max 9s must be grounded for checks after part of an Alaska Airlines plane's um, fuselage fell off on Friday. Alaska said flight disruptions are expected to last into next week. United Airlines United Airlines has grounded 79 planes. Disruptions are likely to primarily affect flights in the U.S. Um, it follows after the regulator, the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, orders um, immediate inspections of 737 MAX 9s worldwide. Required inspections would take around four to eight hours per aircraft, it said. The European Union Aviation Safety Agency, EASA, is following the FAA approach, but flight disruptions on the continent are expected to be minimal. EASA said it believes no European airlines operate MAX 9s with the configuration covered by the FAA order. One of the world's largest intercontinental airports, London Heathrow, said there was no impact on flights. The bulk of the affected planes are owned by US Airlines. United Airlines has grounded, grounded all 79 of its MAX 9 planes. Alaska said it cancelled 160 flights on Saturday, affecting about 23,000 passengers. Other airlines which also fly the planes have temporarily taken them out of service. Boeing said it welcomed the FAA's decision, adding its teams were in close contact with the regulator. During Friday's incident, Alaska Airlines Flight 1282 from Portland, Oregon to Ontario, California reached 16,000 feet when it began an emergency descent, according to flight tracking data. Passengers on board said a large section of the plane's outer shell fell to the ground shortly after takeoff. Images sent to news outlets showed the night sky and lights of Portland visible through the gap in the fuselage with insulation material and other debris also seen. One passenger said the gap was as wide as a refrigerator, while another said a child's shirt was ripped off in the wind as the plane made its emergency landing. The plane, carrying 177 passengers and crew, landed safely back in Portland. Alaska said um, several passengers were injured, but not seriously I don't care if it's a little scrape. I'm going to sue you. I'm going... And you know America is a litigious country anyway. <laughs> Woo! Damn. My heart goes out to those who were on this flight. I'm so sorry for what you experienced. That's the um, Alaska CEO, Ben Minichucci, um, said after the firm volunteered to ground 65 of its 737 MAX 9 planes. I'm so grateful for the response of our pilots and flight attendants, he said. Alaska later said, as of Saturday afternoon, it had cancelled 160 flights. 
The airline said on Saturday that 18 of its MAX 9 planes, about a quarter, had received um, in-depth inspections as part of heavy maintenance checks and were returned to service. But following the FAA's orders, these have since been pulled from service. Wow. We are in touch with the FAA to determine what, if any, further work is required before these aircrafts are returned to service, um, Alaska said in a statement. It added, the aircraft involved in Flight 1282 was delivered to us on 31st of October. The part of the aircraft involved in this in, um, event is called a plug door, a specific panel of the fuselage near the rear of the aircraft. The rear mid-cabin exit door is used in dense seating configurations and um, on some Max 9 planes to meet evacuation requirements, but is plugged on other planes, including the Alaska flight. United Airlines says it has carried out the inspections required by the FAA on some of its 737 MAX 9 planes. Removing some of its aircraft from service was expected to cause about 60 cancellations on Saturday. Um, Turkish Airlines has grounded five of its 737 MAX 9s. Um, Fly Dubai said its three 737 Fat MAX 9s were not affected as they had a different configuration compared to the Alaska Airlines plane and have completed recent safety checks. Um, British regulator of the Civil Aviation Authority, CAA, said there are no registered Boeing 737 MAX 9 planes in the UK and therefore the impact would be minimal. Um, well, somebody here says we are very, very fortunate here that this didn't end up in something more tragic. Well, 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 um, last month, the FAA urged airlines to inspect max models from possible loose bolt in rudder control systems. Why? Look. If I'm wearing a pair of Air Forces and the lace is a bit loose, one of the holes that I put the lace in is a bit loose. That's one thing. That Those are my trainers. But an airline? A plane? Oh, guys, yeah, just check if a bolt's loose there. Just have a look. Look, that bolt being loose is the difference between me making it from point A to point B. Like... Let's be fucking serious. But Boeing has been having some problems for a while from what I've been reading. I don't know what's been happening over there. Lots of cuts, lots of cuts, lots of cuts. But I guess that that's going to affect people in real time. It's very scary scenes is all I'm saying. So, yeah, just um, pay attention to those flight demonstrations, people. Yeah, let's pay attention. Okay. Um, as for Dr. Umar... Oh, God, this raggedy guy. He has some issue with the fact that Vanessa Bryant, he says that Vanessa Bryant hasn't spent the money that she's received from um, the litigation with it. Was it with like TMZ and the police department? Um, the money that she received from that court case that she hasn't spent it on black initiatives um, in honor of Kobe Bryant. I just feel like leave this woman alone. She had to find out about her daughter and her son kind of, it feels like I'm just talking a lot about planes. I'm really sorry. Um, finding out about their tragic death. She had to find out on the news. Um, and so I just don't know why you would then decide that it's her that you want to like focus on it's really weird behavior it's really really yeah it's really weird behavior and it's like he's always looking for somebody's um trouble yeah it's like he's always looking for somebody's trouble and let her grieve like whatever she wants to say she'll decide when she wants to say it but you coming forward and be like oh and it's the way that he tries to deliver these speeches like he's really really saying something where like yeah and she didn't do yeah like if a black woman no i need to even play it one second Kobe Bryant. Let me ask you a question. Kobe Bryant. I'm ask you a question. Rest Kobe Bryant died. Bell, Vanessa inherited his wealth. Sure. And guess what? Is Vanessa Bryant using any of that black man's money to do any good in the black community? Let me ask you Absolutely question. fucking not. We don't know Vanessa that. Bryant. Listen. I don't know. I'm telling you. How you know? Vanessa you know? Bryant. 
Let me ask you a question. Well, she's a public Can figure. I ask you a question? And, and she just you did. don't know. You that. didn't see that initiative. You don't know I that. do know. I do know what I'm telling you, you now. Let me ask you a question. Mr. Bryant just started an initiative with three pr- predominantly white colleges, some sort of a sports initiative with Kobe's money and Kobe's name didn't choose a single HBCU. Let me ask you a question. With a black man's money. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, he died from taking a COVID shot. Is his white widow using any of Marvelous Marvin Hagler's fortune to help black folks? You're being unfair. I'm being unfair how? No, let me tell you why. Expecting white women to use Stop. black money to help black people? No. How is that Cause, unfair? Because we because the same way you naming these people, uh-huh. we can name mad black wives that got black money from their husbands that did shit to help black people. Well, this, Stop. This is my goal. No, this it's not. We own, and you know what the difference no, is? You're wrong. You know you're what the wrong. difference is? You're wrong. You're wrong. So if I marry a white woman, when I die, my wealth goes to the very people who have robbed everything but from hold my on, community. Hold on. That's not true. But Kobe Bryant. I'm gonna ask you a question. Like, he always thinks he's making some kind of point and it's just like shut up like i don't even even the whole the whole conversation like just <sighs> should i ever get any political power you know like there was that card that I picked up from the baby girl meets world um you know from the from the deck and it said if you had sole authority of the world for the day what three things would you do i promise you i promise you one of them i would take the mics away i would take the microphones away from the men i would take jesus oh my god i would take the microphones away from the men i would i would i would i would take the microphones away from the men and the pick me's i would take it i would grab it i would i would seize them all they're criminals i will seize them (laughs) wow because people ed how many of you bought microphones and um podcasting kits for your friends for your lovers for your homies your lovers your friends during christmas never do that again never i joke it's all in jest like i'm all for everybody sharing their opinions and getting themselves microphones and starting their podcasts and doing whatever the hell like do you my thing is like even that whole framework of how they're talking about it oh but there are black wives who don't use their wives money to support black people by that same metric there are black husbands who also don't like wh- why do you lot in your weird ways get so misogynistic and you just focus on women leave women alone they can use the money however they want. You might have wanted them to do a particular thing. They didn't do it. Get the fuck over it. It's weird behavior. It's very weird behavior. And Dr. Umar, like, fam, like, the shtick is getting old. Like, give it a rest. And, I, and of course, you're saying that on Joe Budden's podcast and you got, like, guys are going back and forth, back and forth. I don't feel like cancel culture exists because, I mean, we'll talk about Claudine Gay shortly, but you can know that somebody like Joe Budden has been violent towards his girlfriend to the extent of like, I don't even want to talk about the traumatic results of, of his violence. Um, but still have a podcast and still be like, ha ha ha, who, who, who. And people are going on there and chatting away with him. That's why none of you can ever chat to me. That's why literally you can never, ever, ever, ever chat to me because these are your celebs. These are your people. Disgusting. But I hope that Vanessa just gets some respite. People feel it's the same with um what's her name? Lauren London and when Nipsey Hussle um died. People just feel like they own you. I can't bear to think of what's gonna happen when Vanessa Bryant announces that she's dating someone new. Like, it's God. It's oh gosh. Let me not, child. I, as I said, there we go. Claudine Gay. Claudine Gay um, was the first black president of, of um, is it Harvard? Yeah. And she had to resign last week because people are vexed with her. They're very vexed with her. Um, it says here, Harvard University president Claudine Gay has drawn national attention over her contentious comments on Capitol Hill a week ago about anti-Semitism on campus. Many donors, politicians and business leaders demanded her resignation, but Harvard's board, faculty, um, board, faculty and alumni have come to her defense. 
Gay was inaugurated as Harvard president in late September to great fanfare. She's the first person of color and the first black woman to serve as a president of the America of the America's oldest institution um, of higher learning, making her ascent nothing short of groundbreaking. As a woman of color, as a daughter of immigrants, if my presence in this role affirms someone's sense of belonging at Harvard, that is a great honor. And for those who are beyond our gates, it's, um, if this prompts them to look anew at Harvard, to consider new possibilities for themselves and their futures, then my appointment will have meaning for me that goes beyond words. Um, that's what she said in the December 20, 2002 video announcing her appointment. A lifelong academic with a bachelor's degree from Stanford University and a doctorate from Harvard, Gay appeared destined to reach the pinnacle of higher education. But Gay, I wonder if she's got Leo as a ninth house. But Gay suffered immense reputational damage last week at a consequential December 5th hearing before a House committee. Gay struggled to answer questions about whether calls for genocide against Jews would violate Harvard's code of conduct. She and other university presidents failed to explicitly say calls for genocide of Jewish people constituted bullying and harassment on campus. Gay would later apologize for the poor wording in the testimony, which was echoed by former University of Pennsylvania President Liz McGill, who resigned Saturday, and MIT President Sally Kornbluth, who has not faced any serious repercussions. Interesting. I got caught up in what had become at that point an extended combative exchange about policies and procedures, Gay told Harvard's student newspaper. What I should have um, had the presence of mind to do in that moment was return to my guiding truth, which is that calls for violence against our Jewish community, threats to our Jewish students, have no place at Harvard and will never go um, uh, unchallenged. The Harvard Corporation, the university's top governance board, announced Tuesday morning that Gay has gained the unanimous support of the board, giving Gay significant cover to remain in her position after a tumultuous week. Um, a native, um, a native New Yorker, Gay, 53, is the daughter of two Haitian immigrants. Her father was a civil engineer who worked for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Um, her mother worked as a nurse. Part of Gay's childhood was spent in Saudi Arabia due to her father's job, according to the Harvard Gazette, the um, official news site of the university. She received her education at some of the country's most elite institutions. She attended Phillips Exeter Academy, a private boarding school in New Hampshire, and a feeder to the Ivy Leagues. Gay has served as a trustee at the school. Gay then attended Princeton before transferring to Stanford University, graduating in 1992 with an economics degree. She then went to Harvard, uh, where she received a doctorate in government in 1998. The moment that led me to academia properly was the experience um, as an undergrad of being a research assistant for the King Papers Project at Stanford with Clay Carson and Stuart Burns. That was probably the single moment where I realised there's a path available to me other than being a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer. Um, Gay is first cousins with acclaimed author and New York Times contributing opinion writer Roxanne Gay. In an interview with the Harvard Crimson, Roxanne said her cousin is very resolute and badass and confident um, of her place in the world. Um, Gay's sterling resume includes a laundry list of positions and fellowships at Harvard and Stanford, along with Hartley Fellow at the Washington um, DC based Brooks, uh, Brookings Institute. Um, she was an assistant professor of political science at Stanford from 2000 to 2005 and was a tenured associate professor there in 2005 and 2006. Gay returned to Harvard in 2006 as professor of government and also a professor of African and American studies in 2007. She later served as Edgerly Family Dean of Harvard Faculty of Arts and Scientists, um, Sciences and the Wilbur A. Cowett, oh, is it Cowett? professor of government and of african and american studies gay served as harvard's dean of the faculty of arts and sciences through the pandemic um, led the department to review its um, tenure process and launched a new phd program in quantum science and engineering um we could go on about her resume for ages um 
this part, billionaire hedge fund CEO Bill Ackman, a Harvard graduate, has been among gays' most vocal critics. In a letter to Harvard's board on Sunday, Ackman wrote that Gay, who was inaugurated in July, was done, has done more damage to the reputation of Harvard University than any individual in our nearly 500-year history. So Harvard has been around for 500 years, and this is the first time that they are having a black person, a black woman, as president. Um, they've accused Claudine Gay of um, plagiarism. Um, they've gone through uh, um, lots of her pieces, lots of her writing to accuse her of plagiarism. I believe one of the people, I think the guy that I just mentioned even, um, his wife, it comes to light, has also been accused of plagiarism. But he says it's not the same. And I wonder why it's not the same. What, because she's not a black woman? Um Claudine didn't handle that situation well. Like, of course, that should have been the first thing that you said that. Yeah, if somebody was calling for the genocide of Jews, like, absolutely the fuck not. Absolutely the fuck not. Like, what do you mean? We understand that anti-Semitism is a very, very real thing. Like, what do you mean? But when you're heated like that, you are the president. So come on, babes should have handled that should have handled that better like even if you felt like the person that was asking or how you were being asked it was to cause a sort of false equivalent and to and to um and to intend um a false or misrepresentation of people's uh, and students support of palestine there is still a way that you could have talked about it so you didn't find yourself essentially saying that oh i think it was something like oh um so would it would would the school ha have something to say if um a student called for the genocide of jews and i think she said something like oh well it depends on the context no there is no there is no context where it's okay there is no context where that is okay um i think that whatever they were kind of discussion that they were having was more so how the conflation was happening between people being anti-Zionists and calling for a ceasefire and showing support for Palestinians and it being conflated with, oh, well, then that must mean you hate Jews. It's like, no, they're not one and the same. They're not one and the same. Unfortunately for you, what you said was just not on. The fallout from it, though, feels very anti-black to me. The fallout from it, feels extremely anti-black and i wonder what were was harvard in full support of her genuinely or was it like oh for us to save face and not look like we're pushing the black woman out we are going to say that we're in full support of you but you still need to resign i don't know black women academia is not a safe space for black women and i'm so tired and i hope that this doesn't make me sound like a hater and if it does i don't give a fuck I'm so tired of hearing that this person is the first black to do this and the first black to do that. I know that the other week I said, oh, well, if I study this thing, I'll be the first black person to do it. Just because maybe black people don't want to study it, right? But to be president of an institution that is 500 years old and you're the first black woman? And it's funny that in her speech, she said, oh, well, maybe people see me in this position, lets them know that it's possible for them. And they maybe think of Harvard differently. Absolutely the fuck not now. Because no matter how much you lot glamorize, no matter how much you lot pretend that purely by being excellent and smart and, and well-spoken and well-mannered and doing all of these things as black people, that it means that we're going to reach these high echelons in society um, and stay there that's when you're lying that's when you're lying you're lying to get there is one thing only few get there but to get there and stay there oh baby you're probably gonna have to go to a few parties where children are nearby and you pretend that you didn't see that those children were nearby that's all i'll say about that but yeah, it's it's the the fallout has been really something, and seeing how bl um, black women are treated um, in order to get them out of certain positions. Like for some of these people, they wanted her spot. That's why they're doing a lot of this. It's like they wanted the spot, but it wasn't yours to have. It wasn't yours to have, and this is what scares me. Like, you know, 
to aspire for certain positions, even politically. Because I just think like, people will see you get there and they'll absolutely want to kick you the fuck down. Like they don't want you to be there. Like, how dare you? And that's a scary situation as far as I'm concerned. Um, there are way too many things that I wanted to cover here to go into everything. Alton Towers is closing after 20 years. Alton Towers is a theme park in um, Britain and sad. It's sad. So I guess that only leaves what? Chesington? Sad. Sean Bailey made a comment about Carol Vorderman and I was going to play it, but Sean Bailey, like you couldn't even get a spot as being mayor of London. So you can shut the fuck up. Um, Nia Long and her husband have agreed child support. I think she's going to get, um, what, how much is Nia Long going to get again? That was very, that's a lot of monies. That's a lot of monies. Um, but rightly so, right? Um, it says here, Nia Long and her fiance of six years, sorry, fiance, of six years, Ime Udoka, of course he's Ibo, um, have agreed upon child support settlement for their 12-year-old son after ending their relationship. Nia Long will receive £32,500 uh, $32, a month. Udoka earns $465,000 a month from his NBA coaching salary. That's what I wanted to read to you. That's what I wanted to read to you. I know I was talking about pretend money, but God, please let me pretend. Let me pretend. There's so much good I want to do in the world. And there are so many cute fits I could put together. There are so many places I want to eat at. Like, God, let me pretend. Oh, bring me the pretend money. For, this is what I'm saying to you, fam. Money's not real. What do you mean? There are people walking on this same earth as I am and they are earning from their jobs, from their salary jobs, $465,000 a month. Hell. Hell. Jesus. No, Jesus Christ of the currencies. Wow. And of course, one guy decided that he couldn't do math. Um, and he said something like, oh, um, there's lots of men angry, $32,000 a month. What the hell is child spending that requires $32,000 a month? Some people barely make that a year. Um, child support should be limited across the board, period. No, 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 because it's done on the basis of how much you earn. And if he earns $465,000 a month, then 32000 is absolutely fine. Mind your business. He's not going to feel it because money's not real. Um, somebody wrote here should have been 40k a month Nia Long didn't deserve that at all he humiliated her and she has never been in the media with a negative narrative until this Nigerian oh she came with the xenophobia straight up but girl I can't even argue with you can't even argue somebody wrote damn she really trapped him as if she was the one that cheated men are stupid my god um so yeah so one guy now quotes tweets and he says am I doing the math right I can tell you that he was not. He earns £465,000 per year. So I keep saying pounds. $465,000 per year. She gets $32,500 per month. 32500 times 12 is $390,000. Um, 465 um, minus 390000 um equals 75000 He keeps 75000 dollars for himself even if that were the case you cheated so you can have that 75 that's even if that were the case but that's not the case you mathematician of the year fool somebody wrote no you would multiply 465,000 by 12 the same way that you managed to multiply the 32,500 you'd also multiply the 46,000 46 465,000 you'd also multiply that and um, so they basically did the, did the math for him and they said, so actually he earns five million five hundred and eighty thousand pounds a year. Five hundred ah, five five million five hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year minus three hundred and ninety thousand. That equals five million. See, you still haven't touched the five. Five million one hundred and ninety thousand dollars per year. That is it he said this was the guy's response that got the maths wrong he said so you're telling me he could cheat four more times and still be good 
<laughs> like, that is all you took from that math. Ma Somebody first helps you to correct your maths and all you took was like, damn, damn, you can cheat four more times and still be all right. Men, men, woo, men. Um, apart from that, Kanye um, was wishing his new girlfriend happy birthday, Bianca Sensori, but the um, birthday wish was just very Kanye, very weird and misogynistic. He wrote, happy birthday to the most beautiful, super bad, iconic muse, inspiration, inspirational, talented artist, master's degree in architecture, 140 IQ, loving by my side every day when half of the world turned their backs on me and the most amazing stepmom to our children. I love you so much. Thank you for sharing your life with me. What IQ is not even real. IQ is not even a real thing. So adding that in there was not really doing much. And it's like you wrote this to, 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 to be mean to Kim. Like I'm not a fan of Kim, but like get the fuck up like this is ridiculous this is so sad um taraji p henson um mentioned that the cast of color purple had to drive themselves to set in a rental car when you consider the number of hours they have to spend on set how early that they have to get there with their call times and stuff it's highly irresponsible to even expect them to drive this is the whole reason why um especially those who are seen as like the um, lead actors in something in a production they're not expected to drive they're not expected to do much they're waited on hand and foot a lot of times because you, you're there to deliver your optimum like your optimal performance on screen so getting them to drive a rental to the set is just how much money like no no I haven't even watched The Colour Purple, so let me not speak. But I hear that Sierra's in it, and I'm really proud of you, baby girl. Anyway, for my straw of the week, aka Suck Your Mum, it goes out to the police again, City of London Police. It goes out to them. Yep. It says here, a black youth worker who was standing with his arms folded when he was shot with a stun gun by officers during a traffic stop has been given permission to appeal over a lost uh, claim for damages against City of London Police. Officers claimed in statements that Edwin Afriye um, had um, a adopted a fighting stance before he was hit with by the Taser electrical weapon, but police body worn camera footage showed his arms were folded and he was standing at a distance from them. Afriye, 37, hit his head on a stone ledge and sustained a minor injury after the shot knocked him backwards. A high court judge ruled in June that officers honestly believed, of course, because the judge would know what they honestly believed because he's inside their heart. Shoot, they honestly believed shooting Afriye with the stun gun was necessary because he was a large and muscular man. So for the fact that he's a tall, muscular black man, you you are allowed to read that as a threat even if he's not in a threatening stance that's what we're saying um because he was a large and muscular man who was clearly very agitated of course he'd be agitated if you're chatting to him over bullshit granting permission to um, appeal lord justice william davis wrote that having seen the body worn footage he believed an appeal had a real prospect of success and that there was a sensible basis for arguing that the judge fell into error the case is expected to be heard at the court of appeal early in 2024 i hope you get your money i hope you get your money because fuck fuck the police a three years said the, this appeal being allowed represents a significant stride towards justice not only for me but also for individuals who share similar experiences of being disproportionately targeted by the police the P, the appeal argues that the judge was wrong to assess that the use of a taser weapon on a three year was lawful and that police failed to follow the guidance on its use which insists that it only be used in circumstances that are proportionate, lawful, accountable, and absolutely necessary. Efrié, who works for a local authority supporting care leavers, was driving three friends back from a par uh, party in East London on the seventeenth. Um, sorry, on the seventh of April, two thousand and eighteen when he was pulled over by police in the city. Officers told Afriye they believed he was speeding, but he denied this, pointing out that the road had speed bumps. He believes he was singled out because he was a black man driving a Mercedes, um, Mercedes coupe. Yeah, makes sense. 
Police breathalyzed him, but the machine kept registering an inconclusive result. He was asked to put his hands behind his back to be handcuffed, and he refused to do so, saying he had done as police had told him when he had stopped blowing into the device. He was later charged with failure to provide a sample for analysis, but when the prosecution was ordered by magistrates to provide body-worn camera footage, it dropped the case because it wasn't his fault. Your thing was faulty. Afriye said the high court judge's initial assessment that the stun gun shooting was justified was deeply concerning and disheartening and underlined some of the systemic issues within the justice system and the challenges faced by black individuals seeking accountability for unjust actions by law enforcement. The incident and the ensuing court case have stayed with Afriye. He said, daily I find myself reliving the harrowing events and the ongoing struggles in court. The defence barrister's relentless dismissal of my traumatic experiences adds to the emotional toll. Since the incident um, in 2018, the absence of justice leaves an open wound, making it challenging to move forward. Afriye's legal claim did not go into race discrimination, but he said before the high court hearing that police in the incident treated him like a wild animal and that it would not have happened if he was white. Afriye's solicitor, Kevin Donahue, said, I am really pleased with the Court of Appeals decision in Edwin's case and that he will now have the opportunity to right this wrong. I hope that if the court finds in Edwin's favour, the City of London police and other police forces up and down the country will respect the decision and reevaluate culture and training surrounding the use of taser, particularly against marginalised communities who are disproportionately affected by such draconian uses of the force, um, of draconian uses of force by police officers. Um, Detective Superintendent Carly Humphreys, the head of the professional standards, um, the head of professional standards at the City of London Police said the City of London Police is aware that permission has been granted for, uh, for an appeal of a civil claim in relation to an incident that took place on 7th of April 2018. It would not be appropriate to comment further at this time. Well, I can comment that you're a pussy club. Um, there was another thing that I saw that actually I was in two minds about whether I should... Um, Add that to straw of the week. So, of course, City of London police suck, suck out. And I hope that you get your money um, because you deserve things um, because that's not fair. Um, so my last thing was this TikTok video that went viral where this white uh, ER doctor was saying that he was kind of... Um, he noticed a, f um, a thing, a trend where when white, sorry, when black people are seen by him as a doctor, when they're seen by him at the hospital, they always have their phones out. There's somebody always on the phone with them when they're coming in. Let me play it to you. Um, let me see. Here we go. Here we go. I've been an ear doctor for 10 years now and a significant amount of my African-American patients, while I'm doing a history and physical to understand better what's going on with their problem today, they have someone on the phone. They're either just talking on the phone or they're on FaceTime, but a large percentage of my African-American patients have someone that's there in the room, even though they're not there in the room. Why is that? When I, myself, not speaking for an entire race or ethnicity, have a doctor come in, I hang up my phone. I am deeply... So, that's interesting to me. Dr. Kali, she gives a really great breakdown of it on her TikTok. But, um... That's really interesting to me because he goes, black people, then when he talks about whiteness, him as a white person, he says, oh, I'm not speaking for every white person, but me as a white person, but you're still speaking for all white people. I hang up my phone. And he's basically saying when white people come in, they hang up their phone. Why? Hmm. Riddle me this. Why would black people feel the need? Thinking of the stats about how black people die when they go to the hospitals across the world but with looking at America specifically, why would they, and instead of getting your, instead of jumping on TikTok to say this, why wouldn't you just ask the black patients themselves? Why wouldn't you ask the black people when they're right in front of you why this is the case? But this is exactly why they have the phones out because you don't want to interact with the patients and they have the phones out to have a form of advocacy, to have somebody be with them that's witnessing, hearing what they're being told. Because oftentimes, black people aren't treated fairly within the healthcare system. The healthcare system doesn't care for black people, generally. 
And so much is like, oh, we don't know why we keep having these disproportionate fatalities and this and that when it comes to black people. And the main you say maybe it's racism. Oh, heavens, it couldn't be that because we're not racist. And, la, 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 and they start losing it. And so rightfully so, many people dragged him. I think he took the video down. And in the place of that video, he put out what he deems to be an apology video. And this is really what annoyed me. Let me get that apology video out, baby. Here we go. People are... African-American people are currently and have historically been mistreated and endangered by the American medical system. I posed a question to the internet yesterday about an observation that I had made as an emergency medicine doctor that a disproportionate amount of my African-American patients were on their cell phones during medical encounters. And I thought I knew the answer, but I asked why. And there were a lot of people that were upset that I would talk about this on social media, and they were upset that I wasn't talking directly to my patients about it to get the answer. And I 100% get that. I should absolutely be doing more in my personal practice, in my immediate environment, to help make the medical environment a safer place for black people. It was my hope that by making this video, I could reach a lot more people than I can reach in person and address the fact that there are a lot of people who think that it's rude to be on the phone during a medical encounter. But it was my suspicion that this was rooted in very justified mistrust and fear of the medical system. To everyone that I have triggered and offended, I apologize. It is my genuine goal in life to spread positive ripples throughout the world. And it appears I have missed the mark with this. Shut up. Shut up. Like there are certain words there that he used that you can just see in his video. I think his name's like Dr. J Mack or something on, um, on TikTok that it just really annoyed me because you're making it out like that initial video that you made, like you were very in, like that you were concerned you weren't concerned that like, you made the video mocking them well I'm not on the phone when you know I don't go on my phone I'm not speaking for every race of person but I don't go on my phone when I'm at the doctors but they're on the phone and da -da 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 -da. like you said it to ridicule and humiliate and also you know the predominant um, demographic of people who follow you, um, who follow you on TikTok who see your videos so they're likely to respond and be like yeah because niggers ain't shit and the niggers and the niggers and the niggers. like you know that they that's where they're going to go with it so you are opening up a forum for people to be racist and then sure enough when the black people arrived and they started dealing with you without a white folding chair they started dealing with you suddenly it's like oh no I just wanted to understand more because um you know it's clearly from a space of mistrust you didn't think about the mistrust when you made the first video you didn't think about anything that it could possibly be instead you were insinuating that black people culturally are just rude and for some reason they all just happen to be on the phone when they come through to see you and I'm glad that they were on the phone because clearly that they can see that you're a wayward doctor you're a wayward person and it was probably good that they were documenting and they had somebody there with them on the phone because you can't be trusted. And then pretending to you in, in front of your ring light that you really care. And I'm sorry to anybody I've triggered or offended. It's the way that it was said. I was just like, no, nah, you're not. I just want to spread positive ripple effect through the world. No, you don't, because you were trying to humiliate an entire group of people. You were trying to stereotype them. You were. So you can suck out. And I hope... I hope that somehow your stethoscope gets stuck in your ear. Yeah, that's all. That's all. We made it. We did it. And this episode is very, very long. I'm sorry about it. I'm so, But I think that some of you were saying you love long episodes. So have at it. And also thank you so much for your wonderful comments about the meditation that we did in the last um, podcast episode. I'm so, so happy that you enjoyed it. And I hope to do more things like that, probably in person going forward. Um, yeah 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 I think that's it yeah I'm I got through the episode I just feel so light and at peace in myself um it feels great just like being at home I've spent a lot of time at home I want to spend more time at home um over the next few weeks and just really center myself and obviously get through the writing that I need to get through um before Sarita comes back with notes for the other writing that I was doing um and just sending all of you love so much love i hope that the lightness that i feel i can impart um to you if you're not feeling very light i'm sending you all of the love i've been kaleti your car for oh yeah and remember pov sunday 14th of january at 7 15 p.m on radio 4 um 14th of january i said that anyway 
yeah, I've been Kalechi Okafo and this has been SYM, officially known as Say Your Mind, unofficially known as What What? That's right, Suck Your Mum. Anyway, catch you on the flip side. Peace! It's the Ben's Brunani woman is Baby boys, baby girls, you need to hear this Help you sit down, sit down, receive this realness Make sure your cup's ready for the tea we are go sippy, yo Hard time scrolling for your long shorts You might learn something you never know Could let you find, and she's one of a kind Don't say you mind, say you mind